Do you have a doctor bill your insurance doesn't cover? Have you got an ache that just won't go away? Well, never mind. Look at the funny side. As you can see, tonight the funny side looks at health, or how to postpone your funeral till the very last minute. Your host, Mr. Gene Kelly. Come on! Good evening, and how's your health? Well, I hope it's good because at today's prices, the only person who can afford to be sick is Howard Hughes. And with hospital rooms averaging $75 a day, even Mr. Hughes finds it cheaper to stay at his hotels. Well, that's the problem with health today. You know you've got to stay healthy because even if you have the money or the insurance to pay the bills, there are other problems. Like, it's been estimated that there are 40 million Americans who have never even seen a doctor in their lifetime. They're still in a waiting room. <laughs> Doctors nowadays really are so busy that they can't take new patients. So, if you do have a doctor's appointment you don't happen to need, don't cancel it. Give it to a friend. <laughs> well, even if you have a close relative who's a doctor, he's likely to be a specialist in a, in a disease you don't have or you don't want. So, we all simply must stay healthy. And knowing this, we're all worried sick about it. When I was growing up, when I was growing up, it certainly was a lot simpler. We didn't think about all these things so much. Maybe we didn't know so much about our bodies. We were, we were simply told that we had a system. Everything you did was either good for it or bad for it. That's true. There's only one thing that I never quite understood about the system. And that's what is it? Where is it located? No matter what you think the system is, the important thing is to keep going. How do you remember this? Yes, that's the health chart they had in school when you were a kid showed all the food you needed to grow up healthy and strong. Well, just the other day, my doctor gave me a new chart with all the foods that are bad for you. <laughs> That's right, folks. That's the same food. Now, eggs contain cholesterol, fish has mercury, bread has chemicals, fruit Hydrogen has pesticides. And <laughs> As you can see, more and more Americans are becoming more and more concerned with the kind of food they eat, which is why places like this are sprouting up all over the country. The Organic Onion. It's a health food store. It specializes in pure, natural food. Like this. It's an all-protein mushroom steak. Now, let's see what it's got. It contains uh, thiamine, niacin, riboflavin, phosphorus, magnesium, calcium, rose hips, along with vitamins A, B, C, D, E, and K. Well, I know one thing. This can will never get sick. <laughs> let's see what's on the menu. Here's a steak that's got... Hi. Oh, ha hello. Are you the owner of this place? No, the owner's home sick. I'm your singing waiter, Michael. Oh, Michael. Hi. And I'm Cindy, your busboy. Busboy? A little uh, women's lib? No, it's just that bus girl sounded dirty. <laughs> Say, kids, uh, level with me, will you? Is all this stuff really good for you? Oh, well, look at me. I'm on health foods. How old would you say I am? Oh, 17? 18 and a half. Oh, you're sure aging gracefully, yeah. And hey, guess how old I am? 17? What are you having for lunch? I don't know. I'm just not convinced that all this stuff is better for you than a hamburger, french fries, and a chocolate ball. Oh, Mr. Kelly, you're just like everybody else. You just don't understand. And you're going to tell me. That's right. They got dope crazed chickens laying chemical eggs down on artificial farms in the hills. The hills? Bug-eyed roosters on wobbly legs that they're keeping awake with pills. With pills. Did you ever stop and wonder when you look in the mirror, is this how I'm supposed to be feeling? Then you turn on the faucet and out comes something you wouldn't wash your automobile in. You are what you eat. Don't you think that you ain't? There's not a moment to lose. If I was in your shoes, I'd try and use a little restraint before it's too late. You better listen to me And have the seaweed sandwich with the side of alfalfa And the organic goat lip tea They got college grads sitting up in their labs Sticking hypodermic needles and prunes And PhDs writing recipes for cardboard macaroons Did you ever stop and think after all of these years That you know better? We 
I'm going to have the seaweed sandwich and the organic goat lip tea, but forget the side of alfalfa. Okay, that's Adam and Eve on a raft. Draw Billy Goat and hold the grass. <laughs> I feel healthier already. <laughs> Next to food, one of the important essentials for good health is exercise. Hi, John. Hi. I see you're getting some jogging in there, huh? Yeah, I've been working out at the gym all day. I figured I'd run all the way home. Hey, you're a man with determination. Uh-uh. I'm a man that just missed his bus. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing about exercise is nobody can do it for you. You've got to get out there in the fresh air and do it yourself. Another thing, another thing that's very important to health is just the opposite of exercise, and that's sleep. As Shakespeare put it so well, Sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care. The death of each day's life. So... <laughs> there's a sound that could wake the dead. <laughs> you, know, you know, there are many doctors who believe that dreams are as important as sleep itself. Yes, sir. Uh, what a beauty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bird here is obviously dreaming, and he's obviously enjoying it, too. Look at that smile. <laughs> dreams are important. <laughs> because dreams get rid of unnecessary problems. Oh, Ethel, baby. <laughs> Bert? Bert? Or maybe Cosm. <laughs> you recognize this? The thermometer is a very important item around the house. Now, we've shown you some of the ways people try to stay healthy, but no matter what you do, sooner or later, your body turns on you, and you get what is known as a symptom, like, uh, like a fever. Or a, a symptom is when your brain sends a message to your body to start hurting, and you get a pain someplace. And right away, you start complaining to your wife, and you give her a pain someplace. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kelly. I think you better go lie down. I think she's right. <laughs> Welcome back to the funny side and this week's subject, health. And we have good news for all you babies being born tonight. Because if you were born in America 100 years ago, your life expectancy was only 40 years. But any baby born tonight can expect to live at least 70 years. That gives you babies 30 more years to have symptoms. <laughs> If you're going to have symptoms, here's a hint. Don't make it mild. If you want attention, you've got to dramatize it. Can't you see that? Well, which eye? Oh, Jenna! Mr. Kelly, I think he's turning into a bit of a hypochondriac. A hypochondriac. Now, that's a fella who insists on being buried next to a doctor. <laughs> now, there's still another kind of symptom. It's the one you'd rather not admit to because it means you're getting a little old. 
Do you recognize these symptoms? They are the symptoms of waiting. Here we are in a doctor's office. You can tell it's a doctor's office because the doctor is not in. You can also tell it's a doctor's office because there are his diplomas hanging on the wall. Now that the church has the mass in English, a doctor's office is the only place in America you can still find Latin on his diplomas and on his prescriptions, neither of which you can read. Here is the doctor's appointment book, and while I'm here, I'm going to try to make an appointment. Now, let's see. No Wednesdays, he's on the golf course. 15th to the 13th, he's in Bermuda. No Saturdays, Sundays, no nights, no house calls. Oh, here's a date, an open th December 1st, 1973. <laughs> Well, just my luck, I won't be sick that day. No, no, I won't bother. He's got an answering service. Oh, come on, doctor, will you answer the phone? <laughs> and now, one of the miracles of modern medicine, someone actually getting his doctor on the phone. Hey, thanks for calling. I guess Great likes the way things were done in the good old days. And other things, for example, the old-fashioned drugstore. Some of you may remember these. These are remedies we actually took as kids. Do you recall worm wafers, serpa figs, sulfur and molasses, and a mustard plaster? Remember, if you had a chest cold, you'd stick this on. A few hours later, rip it off, your cold would be gone, along with a good part of your chest. <laughs> this, of course, is a mortar and a pestle. In the old days, the druggist used this to make all his pills by hand. Now, uh, today, the druggist buys all his pills in big bottles. Then all he has to do is put them into little bottles. It takes half the time and costs 10 times as much. And that's called profits. <laughs> this is a hospital. It's one of 7,000 in America that takes care of 200 million people. So you see, the hospitals don't need patients. It's the patients who need patients. <laughs> anyway, if you're having a baby, this is the most beautiful place in the world. Otherwise, you arrive with anxieties and a limited insurance policy. And what do they give you to cheer you up? A roommate. <laughs> well, it's late. The day is over. The hospital is quiet. Everybody's turned in for the night. Well, for the past hour, we've been looking at the funny side of health. And I hope Excuse that we have... Excuse me, Mr. Kelly. Why, sure, Cindy, what is it? Well, before the show is over, I have something important I'd like to say. Okay, what's on your mind? It's not what's on my mind, it's what's on my teeth. <laughs> oh, braces. <laughs> sure, to you it's, oh, braces. But to me, it's five years of pain and anguish. Teenagers of America, unite. We've got to get together about the problem of braces on the teeth. Why do we wear braces? I was told if you do not wear braces, your teeth will be crooked and all fall out by the time you're 30. <laughs> Who told me these things? My dentist. He ought to know he's the richest man in the free world. <laughs> Teenagers, I say wearing braces is a plot against us. Before I wore braces, I was going with the captain of the football team. Now, wearing braces, I'm going with that skinny guitar player with the flat feet. <laughs> braces are ridiculous. If you wear bottom braces, you gotta smile like this. <laughs> if you wear top braces, you gotta smile like this. <laughs> if you wear uppers and lowers, you've gotta give them this. <laughs> also, they make braces with rubber bands to make them tighter. They are nothing but trouble, these rubber bands. I tell you, kissing is no fun with a guy when his tooth gets caught in your rubber band and he pulls his head away and it snaps back into your face. They say braces are good for your teeth. If that is true, I ask you this. Have you ever seen a dentist wearing braces? <laughs> Next week, we'll give any dentist wearing braces equal time. <laughs> As I was saying, for the past hour, we've been looking at the funny side of health, and we certainly hope you've seen it too, because there's nothing funny about the $67 billion a year we spend trying to keep healthy. But if this is any help, here's a toast from us to you with organic apple juice. <laughs> and you always have good health.
And if you don't have it, may you always have a good doctor. <laughs> and a good, a good doctor, doctor means one who never has, has to say he's sorry. sorry. <laughs> may you always have clean air, fresh food, and pure water. And may you always have enough money to travel to wherever that may be. <laughs> may your life be free from pain and discomfort. Here's mud in your eye. Oh, Warren. <laughs> Remember, whether you are sick or well, it never hurts to be nice to your mother. And don't keep trying to get younger. It's a waste of time. The thing to do is to keep trying to get older and older and older. <laughs> Skull! Skull!